Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the new event authoring mechanism for callbacks, event callbacks for specific frames in Creature. And this feature is very useful because you might want to, say, have event triggers that occur for footsteps. So you want to play footstep sounds at specific frames of the animation in your game, or you want to spawn particular particle effects at particular frames in your game, right? And so previously I had shown a tutorial where you could author frame callbacks in Unreal Engine, but that was that was specific to Unreal Engine, and this new feature, this new update allows you to author the events in the Creature Editor itself and export that as a file, so you can use it in other game engines. So the current runtimes that, that have been updated for this for this release, for this update, are Unity and Unreal Engine. Now, so without further ado, let me show you how it's done. This is the Fox animation. You can download it from the samples page. There's a couple of animations in there already, animation clips in there already, and we're going to use it for the, the, the purposes of this demo. Now, what, what you do is you go to Animate, and then there is a menu item called Animate Region Ordering slash Event Trigger. So click on that. Now the default mode is the regions, that's for animating region ordering. If you're interested in learning about that, please watch a tutorial on that. But today we're talking about events, so click on events. And that's really all it is, it's super simple. Now let's say I wanted an event to be triggered at frame 0, which is what where I am. Just click add and it will give you an event name. The default name is fine, but you can change it to whatever you want and click OK. And there, there you go, a new event has been added at frame 0. I can also add another event at frame zero, right? So now, now there's two events, right? And you can also, of course, remove and change the time of that event too. Now I can step forward a couple frames, say at frame 29, and then I can click add again, and it's going to add another event at frame 29, right? So you can see how this works. It's super, super simple. Essentially, you just step through the frames of the animation you care about, and then you look for the frames that you want a, an event to be triggered, you click add, and it will add a new event for you at that particular frame. That's really all this. And so I can show you, I can show you I already have an event set up for the run cycle of the fox. So let's take a look. And there you have it. There's a bunch of triggers you can see going on from the first, the first, or not first frame, but the 11th frame all the way till the end of the animation at 274 right so this this is the event set up for the fox all right okay so once you have this set up what you do is you export the event right so you go here export game engines and then depending on again the version of creature you have you choose the correct export file format right now once you're done with that, we are going to take a look at the export folder and we are going to see what files you require to import that into two engines, Unreal Engine and Unity. So I'll cover that next. Okay, so let's take a look at the files that were, that were exported from the Game Engine export of Creature. So this is the export directory and the file we care about is this M data file or the meta data file, right? So in Unreal Engine, we're going to import this file directly. It's going to create a metadata asset. This is exactly the same process you do to import in the layer region ordering animation stuff. It's exactly the same file. So this, the metadata file is the file you care about. Now in Unity, you do, this, you do this, the same thing. Sorry, you do the same thing. But just remember, you have to rename the metadata file into a JSON file, .json, because Unity only accepts certain types of extensions to be read in, so that's all you need to do. But for all intents and purposes, this is the file you need to import into the appropriate game engines. And so without further ado, I'm going to demonstrate how to trigger the events with the authored exported event file in both Unity and Unreal Engine. So I'll start off with Unreal Engine first. All right, so here is Unreal Engine with the Fox character set up. Again, if you're unfamiliar with how to set up a character, an exported character and creature in Unreal Engine, please watch the previous tutorials where I covered that very thoroughly. But assuming you set this guy up, what you need to do next is go to the components, the creature component, the creature mesh component, and notice there is a slot here called creature meta asset. 
right? So you want to point that to your imported metadata asset. You basically drag that metadata mdata file into the assets directory of Unreal Engine. It will create a meta metadata asset type struct for you or a node for you, whatever you want to call it. And then you import that asset in. You point the fox, fox's creature meta asset slot to the the meta asset you imported, right? So you, you set that one up. Now by default it's inactive. Okay, so what, what what do you do next? Well, let's go to the event graph of this character. So notice I've set this guy up. It does a couple initialization things that you don't really care about, but crucially, so I'm calling this an event play in Blueprint, an event play. Crucially, the final step is what you care about. If you want it to want, want it to, to load the events from the meta asset, you just call this function load blueprint from callbacks asset, right? And so once you do that, it's going to load in the assets, the, the events that we set up in in creature, in the creature editor. As simple as that. Just call the sim, sim, single function. And of course, don't forget, just like in the previous Unreal Engine tutorial where I did the frame callback events, you have to add in a creature frame callback event. This is actually available on the creature mesh itself. Look under, click on creature mesh. And under events, there is a creature frame callback event. So add that into your event, into your event graph, right? And then you can do a bunch of things with it. It has a slot called name. That's the name that you gave the event yourself when you authored it in the creature animation editor itself. So in here, I'm going to play a footstep sound when the event is triggered, okay? So that's really all it is. And let's see what happens. And there you go. See, the fox is now playing footstep sound when it hits the ground because I had actually authored the event to be triggered when the feet hit the two feet hit the ground. So that's basically what's happening. Okay, cool. So it's working. Okay, so that's how it's done in Unreal Engine and I'm gonna show you how to do it in Unity next. Okay, so now we are in Unity. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how it's done in Unity. So again in Unity, if you're not familiar with how to set up a creature character Unity, please watch the previous tutorials. But the basic concepts involve creating a creature asset and a creature renderer. And in this case, you're also going to need a creature game controller, all of which are accessible and created from the creature menu item, right? So the assets you're going to connect up as usual, the flat creature data, flat buffers file and check the flat data asset that loads it in and shows you all the frame ranges. But the next thing you have to connect up, as I told you, is the creature meta JSON. That's the creature data meta M data file, which you have to remember, you need to rename it into a dot JSON extension. That's how it works in Unity. Otherwise it won't recognize that file. So that's a Unity Unity thing you need to you need to know about. So once you've renamed it, you can then connect it up to the metadata slot, the meta JSON slot slot. Okay? So you're done with that. And then again, you set out the renderer. You can see the fox over here. You give it a shader, connect up the the asset, right? And it'll show the fox. And then you have the game controller, which you set up as well. You point it to the creature renderer. Okay, so all those things are pretty standard. But how do you do the events? Well, this is more of a code code coding tutorial. So I'm going to load out the code editor because in Unity there's no blueprints. So you're going to use C sharp scripting to actually trick load the events and trigger them off. Now. Back to Unity again, by default, once you actually have connected up the meta JSON, when you load the character, the plugin is automatically going to help you load all of your events. So you don't have to worry about loading. The only thing you need to worry about is how to connect up your game controller to be aware of those events. And I have conveniently provided, this is a pretty short tutorial actually, conveniently provided events and delegates. These are basically just triggers, event triggers. Just connect up your own custom event trigger to the, 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 the slots over here. This, this is basically a standard C sharp or Unity event or event notification or delegate slot. Okay, so I'm not going to illustrate how to do this for you because there's a ton of tutorials online already. In fact, there is already an official Unity tutorial on how to use delegates and events. So please watch that tutorial because essentially it's exactly the same thing exactly the same concept. You have a delegate and an event and it teaches you how to trigger trigger how to connect yourself up to, to that to that delegate or that event and it will then be triggered. So when it, once you connect up your own your own events to, to this event over here, 
when your custom author event is is is, is triggered, it's going to call your own function, and you can do whatever you want. You can play a sound, you can emit a particle effect, or change a shader. It's all up to you. So that's all. That's how it's all done in Unity. It's done through C# -sharp scripting, and it's done through these two lines over here. You can see these two lines have been added to the game controller, the latest game controller, C# -sharp code. So please grab the latest runtimes and then just connect up your own events to the event trigger mechanism over here. It takes in an input string, which is the event name. So when, when your function gets called, you're going to know which, what type of event it is based on the name, and you can then perform your actions appropriately. So that's really it. That's really it for the Unity and Unreal portions of the event trigger, trigger mechanism tutorial. And I hope you enjoy watching it, and I think it will be very useful for your game dev pipeline. Thanks for watching.